Dr. Rico here. This is a lecture from my course, System Dynamics. The syllabus link is in the description. All right. Analytic and numerical output response example in MATLAB. That's what we're doing in this example problem. So here's the problem. Consider a state space model with the following standard matrices. We have the A matrix, which is a four by four, so four state variables here. We have the order of it, of course, the length of A, which is gonna give us four. The B matrix, which is a four by one, see we only have one column here, which implies that we have one input, okay? The C matrix and the D matrix are sort of the trivial cases. The C matrix is the identity matrix, which gives us an output, which is just the state variables, as long as we zero out, as we do, the D matrix. So we have outputs that are just the state variables so it's a bit of a con it's the output response but the outputs are just the state variables but we'll use the output response equation and just put c and d in in their sort of uh, trivial forms all right so let's go ahead and solve this uh, we'll solve it analytically we're going to compare it to the built-in matlab simulation functions like lsim all right so solve for the unit step response output y given the following initial condition. So we're going to solve for the free response and the forced response um, together here, right? We've got an initial condition and an input, unit step input. So we'll solve uh, analytically and using MATLAB's built-in numerical functions. So. We begin with the analytic solution. We use the solution uh, from this chapter, from the state space response chapter that we've been going over, uh, which is that the output response for a state space model is C times the state transition matrix phi times the initial condition of the state vector, so X of zero plus the C matrix times the time integral over phi, that's time shifted, B U, that's our input vector, D tau. So uh, this is a dummy time variable tau uh, because we're gonna be um, good little mathematicians here, plus D U. So we see that uh, since our C matrix is the identity matrix, C, C, those have no effect on this expression. And uh, D is going to be zero, so this will be zero. And what we're left with here is really just the state response equation, the state response formula. So, uh, but we'll apply it and then we'll, we'll uh, uh, see how we do. So we need phi, we need the state transition matrix. The primed basis requires the eigen decomposition. Remember, the primed basis is the basis that we use for finding the state transition matrix in the so-called diagonal uh, uh, basis vectors. So the diagonal basis uh, is one in which the A matrix is diagonal, assuming that we have no repeated eigenvalues. And... Uh, we are going to use this as we usually do for our analytic response. So we're going to first compute the eigenvector eigenvalue decomposition. Um, and we aren't even bothering to print it. We're getting you know more used to this now. We're, we're feeling comfortable. Modal matrix, eigenvalue matrix. Um, we can construct phi prime using this form, which again is a construction that gives us a diagonal of scalar exponentials to the eigenvalues times time, um, which is the phi prime um, matrix exponential. 
Now, the basis transformation, as usual, we take m phi prime, capital phi, prime m inverse, which gets us the state transition matrix in the original basis. I'm suppressing the functions of time here, so that notation is being suppressed. These are, of course, functions of time, phi and phi prime. So uh, we can do that calculation. We're going to do it symbolically, and we'll use big T because tau would be hard to do in MATLAB. So uh, we use big T. And we just plug it into our equation. Um, this is going to do a symbolic integration. So int here is going to integrate from zero to tt. We use tt for time here, for t, in the MATLAB script. So uh, here is our here is our um, symbolic uh, solution. Just plugging it into that equation. Uh, we're allowing MATLAB's symbolic toolbox to just handle the integration for us, the matrix multiplication for us. Of course, we already had it handle the eigen decomposition for us. So um, yeah, we're just plugging it in. The input here, uh, we just set to one, which is true for all time equal to zero and greater. So um, we are uh, totally good to go there. Uh, so convert this to a numerically evaluable function, MATLAB function. You can give it a symbolic expression. It'll convert it into a numerically evaluable function in the symbolic variables. So let's plot the result um, as we do here. And uh, using our usual plotting routines, we'll plot it for eight seconds and 200 points. And we see that the four outputs here, y1, 2, 3, and 4, um, oscillate and damp out. We didn't actually even look at the eigenvalues, but looking at this, these responses here, um, there, is, there is certainly uh, at least one complex conjugate pair happening here, right? Because we have oscillation occurring. We could have two, potentially. Um, I don't see strong evidence of two different frequencies here, but it's possible. So uh, we see a decay as well. So we're looking at something that's underdamped. Um, if we looked at the eigenvalues, uh, we would see that we have negative real parts and the system's coming into a new equilibrium with that step input. We also had an initial condition that we applied as well, here is um, the evidence of that. Uh, y1 and y2, which, uh, sorry, y1 and y3, which correspond to the first and third state variables, which we just took to be the first and third outputs, they have two as their initial condition, whereas um, y2 and y4 have zero as their initial condition. And you see them all respond to their initial conditions and to the step input. Okay, so that was our analytic response. We could have gotten into more detail there, but we kind of allowed MATLAB to just do the calculation for us, do the integration for us, and all of the, the uh, challenging calculations to do by hand. Now let's look at uh, MATLAB's tools for doing a numerical solution. So if you give it the A, B, C, and D matrices, of course, these are all numerical matrices, A, B, C, and D. We haven't defined any symbolic variables in them. These are not symbolic matrices. MATLAB will not do this um, if you have symbolic matrices. So numerical matrices, A, B, C, and D. We're gonna apply LSIM to it. So LSIM is uh, a function that we use a lot. We can give it a state space model or an, another LTI um, system model, which you can define from a transfer function or from um, a zero pole gain uh, model. Um, so you can use LSIM for these types of systems. So SIS is what we defined our state space SS model as. Uh, we give it this input. So the input is a vector that has different values through time. We want it to just have the value of one. It's a unit step input, right? So 
we make a matrix or vector in this case of ones uh, the size of the time array, which we're going to use the same time array as we did before. So uh, we we make a, a, an array of just one, 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 um, all the way down to the end. And so for each value of time in this time array that we give it, we have a corresponding value of the input, which is just one in this case. Also got to give it the initial state and it'll go ahead and simulate what the output is. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results by plotting it in the usual way. It looks the same as our analytic response. So we've used the analytic approach and now we've used the numerical approach that uh, uh, MATLAB has built into it using, well, at least the control systems toolbox, the SS command and then LSIM. So uh, by just inspection, it's hard to tell if there's really any difference at all. So let's go ahead and plot the difference between those two um, and see. What we see here, and that's what's shown in, in this mixed dot three figure, what we see is 10 to the minus 15 um, being the order of magnitude of the error between these um, responses, meaning that, that uh, our analytic approach and the numerical approach of MATLAB are very, very close. Um, there are hardly any differences. You can start to see these jagged differences when the uh, machine epsilon uh, of a, a double precision variable in MATLAB is being maxed out. So we're, you know, 10 to the minus 16 is about machine epsilon. So we're seeing that sort of quantization happening down here. So we're getting uh, within, you know, a, a, a few uh, quantizations of the, uh, the uh, of the analytic solution with the numerical solution. So they're both very good. And if you're just interested in a response um, in, in a very specific case, the, uh, you know, LSIM, the, the numerical approach is solid. However, if you're interested in learning more about the functional form of the solution, the analytic solution is the only game in town for that. So we didn't take a look at it, but we could have. We could have explored what the functional form was, and uh, we could have gained a lot more insight into um, how the system is going to perform under different circumstances with different initial conditions, potentially with different inputs, if we took a look closely at how the integration was working. I'll just leave you with one more way that we could use MATLAB's numerical routines that are built into the control systems toolbox to compute what the response is in this case. So uh, we could use the step command to find the step response. In this case, we want to know the response of the system to a unit step input and the given initial conditions. So we could compute them separately um, using the step command and the initial command. Those are two control systems toolbox functions. Um, and then we could sum the two responses, applying superposition, of course, in this case. So if we do the step response, um, we would just use step, we would give it that SS, remember sys was equal to SS of A, B, C, and D, right? So we plug in that definition and uh, the time array. It'll give us the step response. So just the forced response, not the um, response to the initial conditions. Separately, we could use the initial command. We give it the same sys uh, system, and we give it our initial condition and the numerical time array. The free response is computed from that command, and we know through superposition that we can simply sum the free response to the step response or the forced response to get the total response to both the initial conditions and the input, the step input. 
course, we did both at the same time in our two previous solutions. Um, here we have we we chose to do them separately um, using these two other commands. Um, so you could take a look at how they you know how the system responds to a step input separately from initial conditions. Of course, we could do that in our analytics solution as well. We could also do that um, using LSIM, but uh, I thought I'd show you a couple different methods for doing that in MATLAB. So that's all I've got for you on this example. Tune in next time for more system dynamics. All right, guys, take care.